All right, you're hot, buddy. Yeah. All right. Hey, everybody. This is David, the Georgia photographer. Got a new mic, so hopefully the audio will be better and it won't be that raspy cutting out clipping mess that I've been doing. And we are live. Phil is on the other side of the wall. Uh, Aaron's here. He's in the background getting all the magic going. I see TV and Joyce checked in. I hope you are doing well tonight. I'm trying to get myself sorted out here. We have all these wonderful screens everywhere. And I honestly, we have too much technology on our side. It's, it's almost no such overwhelming. Thing, senor. Yeah. Oh, but there is. Let's see. What? Discord's on its own window. How is that even possible? Because <sighs> it's, I guess, exit full screen. There we go. I don't know what I did then, but that was weird. There's what I need. Right, let's get rid of this. Hide that. Hide that. There. Now. Hey, I'm getting somewhere. All right, guys. Tonight, we got a list of stuff. I have a list. <laughs> um, one of you guys sent me a link to a video, and it's by a fellow by the name of Taylor Jackson. I had never heard of him until today. I watched this video that they recommended I watch, and it's a Nikon Z6 review. And it says in the title, after a quarter of a million frames, he basically was contracted by Nikon to do a, apparently a documentary. And it took him like 10 weeks. And he went with a crew of people and they went around the world doing photography and videography with Z6s and, and of course, all Nikon gear. And he basically said with the, with the version three software, this is one of the cameras to have now. It's not the machine it was when it launched, even though physically it's mechanically the same. The software has improved so much. It's a completely different animal now. And it was a really interesting video. I'm, I'm going to go back and catch his other ones that, that and see the documentary itself. Have y'all ever seen this guy before? Negative. You haven't seen Talk him either? Not. I have yeah, not. his name is his name is Taylor Jackson, and uh, it's a uh, he's like I guess he's a Nikon ambassador. There you go with that fifty one fifty stuff again. <laughs> I'll be doing fifty one fifty stuff until the day I die. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> There's Doug and there's Cuban Rum and Mike Mitchum. How you guys doing tonight? Phil, what's the beer tonight? Mike's asking. Yeah, Bud Light. Ah, good cheap old all, good old all American. Yep, cheap and tastes good. <laughs> Doesn't give you a headache. It's perfect. Yeah. I'm I'm having Dazani by Coca Cola. Ah, uh, this cheap, exactly tastes good. This is um, actually a repurposed Dizani bottle before, because I forgot my water bottle, so I just filled it back up with Sam Mountain well water out of the bathroom sink. <laughs> that works. Mm -hmm. Even cheaper. Ah, and Bass Angler is here, too. <laughs> hey, I'm glad to see this. TV, good to see you. I got to admit, we had an unbelievable response to the photo challenge this week. Apparently, everybody was literally sitting on their hands hoping I'd say, use your longest telephoto because y'all did. Dude, everybody got out and took photos with their super telephoto lens last week. It was incredible. Except what? Oh. God, denied. Can't believe that. Oh no. Apparently, apparently you and every other photographer in that region because some of the photos submitted this week were I think of that particular team. Oh, okay. 
All right, I got that. Nice. So I'm going to go ahead and throw this out there. If you have any questions for any of us three, I'm not sure about the other two, but I'll try my best to answer anything I can. Um, we sometimes get ahead of ourselves or kind of run away with things. And since we've been doing this a while, we tend to, we tend to get excited and not slow down. And if you're just new to photography, we will not belittle you or berate you because you ask what might be considered a novice question. We will answer your question. So don't think you've got too simple of a question because we're talking about all these exotic terms and things. It's not that big of a deal. So yeah, if you've got a question for us, shoot, I'm more than happy to answer it. All right. I want to just throw that out there because like I said, we'll get excited and we've been doing this a long time. So we'll start, you know, it just kind of picks up steam and runs with itself. So yeah, if there's something we've said you won't explain, just ask us. Okay. We'll be happy to answer you. I did. It's a uh, not by name. It says, uh, it might say Teresa on it. I'll have to look. Let me see. It's in there. I just dropped it in Dropbox um, just a few minutes ago. It longlensproject.jpg is what it says. Everybody else has a name on it, and I was in a hurry, and I didn't put my name on mine. You'll see it's Teresa. and Okay. And that was with me adding some sharpening. That's There's a story behind my photo. There's a few people that's got some interest in um, – behind the scenes information that they sent this week i made notes so i wouldn't um forget about it but let's see. bts yeah ray soldano sent a bts photo of how he got his dog shot and it's it's really interesting to see what all he went to to get that photo but yeah um let's see here i got a new cat joy got a d500 sweet Nice. The finest DSLR APS-C sensor ever made. Second only to the XT3. <laughs> so that's that's not a DSLR. So <laughs> oh I... <laughs> oh, that's a nice machine. Um Bass Angler got one too recently. Ah, Axe is here. Hey. All right. Oh, okay. You got me drug in. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hmm. It's like it was um, designed by Lotus. Let's see here. I have an upcoming video that's going to talk about this lens on the Z6. It was requested, and I've um, been shooting that over the past week. This is my 500 millimeter reflex lens. It's a mirror lens. If you've never used a mirror lens, it is almost an exercise in futility to get sharp photos. I used to <laughs> it's think, tiny, though. yeah, it's small. They, I give them that for getting it compact, but the depth of field is so shallow. Honestly, I don't know how I got sharp photos with the DSLR without focus magnification. It's almost impossible. It really is. I mean, I was struggling even with focus magnification. The slightest movement of the barrel would just shoot past it on focus. It's, it's shallow. But yeah, I'm working on that. I got a couple other videos of I got the shop tour done. It's uploaded. It's in the queue. So y'all get a shop tour for long. I did that finally. Well, that'll be cool. Yeah. Yeah. After the, after watching you work on your lens on, what do you call that machine? The lathe. Yeah. After watching you work with the lathe, seeing the rest of the shop sounds pretty interesting. Yeah. I, I did it after hours. So none of the machinery is actually running, but you know, at least that way I can open the doors and show you this stuff on it without it like getting coolant all over my camera <laughs> <laughs> let's see here 
Joy also upgraded her lens to the Generation 2 Tamron 150 to 600. Dang, what did you not Dang. buy this week? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Scott Patterson's here. How you doing, Scott? Not, thank you for joining us. Your construction of the adapter was... Well, thank you. I appreciate that, Mike. It, um, yeah, that was the lens great, actually got to be fun. Series. What? I'm sorry, Phil. What'd you say? I just said it was a great series. Sorry, interrupting. Oh, thank you. Go ahead. I appreciate it. Um, that that focus ring made the lens, and there's something coming. I got something in the mail to go with that project just the other day. So there's more to come with the Argus lens project, but it's one or two more videos. And that's all. But what was that? <laughs> Oh, that's Phil cool. moving something around on the desk. Okay. Um, Phil, Phil doesn't have the dog in the room today, so he's making up for the absence of the dog. <laughs> he's making his own cone of shame. <laughs> I didn't get my other chair, so now I hear I got squeaky chair. It creaks when I move. <laughs> RD, you didn't send your photo? Um, can, I, can I give him your email, Aaron? Yeah, sure. I don't care. All right, um, let me put it in the chat then. Here, I can do it, dude. Uh, Since I, oh, okay. I, I can type it Just faster than you can. That way, probably so, to be known. Hmm. I set my uh, minimum input level lower, which does two things. It makes more noise from my end, but it also makes it where I don't cut out as much, I hope. So we'll see. Okay. I think Aaron I'm having does push the to talk. Test what, what do you want me to say? Oh, nothing. I was just mm -hmm. saying that I adjust my input level when you do push the talk. Oh, yeah. I always so there we go. Talk. This week. <laughs> Woody said, hey, Phil, scroll back up. I paid you a compliment. <laughs> oh, I, well, that is definitely worth looking for. Let me, let me go compliment fishing. Oh, yeah. He's he's got that algorithm going on, don't he? Algorithm. Yeah, you'll see. I seen the comment now. You got a gator rhythm? There's so much happening. Yeah, Phil knows how to play the algorithm game. <clears throat> well, I just put uh, Nikon Z6 as a uh, tag. So, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> is that what you're doing? <laughs> you have to put yep. tags. Oh man. I have to go back and do all my videos over now. Come on. You know, you're doing tags. Uh huh. Well, you should go check the view counts. It's almost like I'm not. <laughs> but let's see here. I got that item talked about. Let's see what else is on this list. What's next, boss? Oh, I can, um, while Aaron's getting the photos queued up for this week's project. I got next week's project already figured out. Uh oh. oh no. Are you sitting down? Uh, no. Yes. This one's I gonna be tough. Down. This one's gonna be tough. Get an interesting photo with your shortest lens. I'm gonna go to the other extreme. That's good. I got a 14 millimeter lens. <laughs> right. Dorsey. Yeah. Uh, my my shortest lens is 20 mil. I don't have anything wider angle than 20 millimeter, but I do have a 20. So I'm going to try and do something interesting with 20 millimeters. Probably break the social distancing rule and get a street photo because, you know, if you get close enough to the 20, it looks cool. <laughs> Maybe I'll set it up on remote and have somebody walk by it. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, I, that sounds fun. And, uh, I, you know, that's probably of all my favorite lenses, my ultra wide is probably my least used. Really? Uh, you would, yeah, you would think uh, somebody who does a lot of landscape photography would use that a lot, but I don't. 
um, I, I'm, I'm more likely to be at, at 120 millimeters for a landscape shot than I am at 14. I'll tell you where. Yeah, I noticed that. Where, where like the super wide stuff comes in handy is like if you're trying to get like a lot of your foreground, like if you got something really interesting up close to your, your camera, right. you want to get that mm -hmm. in focus and, you know, get a big landscape behind it. That's where your ultra wide mm -hmm. comes in real handy. Yeah, me and Aaron was photographing um, rural churches a lot on on our way back from Crossville that day. We just, as we was driving down backcountry roads, we'd see one, we'd pull over and just take a picture of it. Well, we got out at one, and it was like um, by a creek or something, and he starts walking forward to get it in frame on his, what, his 14 to 24, and he's at 14 mil. <laughs> And that's when I realized how much wider 14 millimeters is than 20. Cause I was it's, way back. It's like two different. It's like having telephoto. Yeah. It was it's, amazing. Uh, it's amazing. It's anti-photo. Yeah. He was literally in the churchyard on the inside of the fence and still had the whole building in, fo in frame and had some other stuff. And I was back across the fence up at the other road. <laughs> it was ridiculous how far back I had to get. <laughs> yeah it's so the distortion is so noticeable on an ultra wide also uh you know you better hold that camera level or things are going to get wonky i, I know beg, you can I correct beg that to differ. Still... okay I, 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 <laughs> I can show i can show you some shots you know shot at like 15 16 millimeters and i was able to bring the distortion back and it looks amazing okay fair yeah. enough yeah, Adobe can straighten the lines out. It has, I don't remember if it's Photoshop yeah. or Lightroom will do it, but one of them has a function where, yeah, it'll yeah, fix well, perspective most lines. Of them, most of them but have what you that. Do is leave a lot of room. You know, you got to leave a lot of room because it's, you know, when it's straightening that up, it's also going to do all sorts of other wonky stuff. So, oh. you know, you have to be willing like to crop some of that off, don't you? Exactly. Exactly. Or just don't take a picture of a building. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that that that'll get tricky because that uh, that's a lot of lines you got to get all straightened up. But I, I, you know, like Capture One, Lightroom, uh, DxO, they all have geometry. Uh, they all have advanced geometry functions in there for like you know for straightening out wide angles. They won't defish eye. You have to actually get another piece of software if you want to use like fish eye lens and turn that image. Huh. I'm I'm adjusting the chat window. What's wrong with I'm trying it? Trying to there's a way to is stack there lens these. distortion on it. Is there lens distortion on it, Aaron? <laughs> on the chat window? No, I don't know. <laughs> was, it, I'm not looking at the it, chat it was, window. It was a joke. Uh, I think that was I think he's messing with me. Sort windows by, show view options. One of these will allow me to set these pictures up like I want. That ain't what I want. Crap, I can't make it do what I want. That's frustrating. Oh, well. I'll just live with it. <laughs> uh, like every other stream, I can get this screen to set the... We look at Discord on the backside to be able to see us because there's a delay and it messes with your brain if you watch it on YouTube and listen to the YouTube part because, you know, it's happening a second or two ahead of time and it's mess it messes with you. So we watch it on Discord and then you guys see it on YouTube more cohesively. And it's there's a way of setting these windows up to where I can see both windows on the screen at once. And I've gotten lucky twice and accidentally set it that way and I cannot, for the life of me, remember how to do it re reliably. <laughs> oh, it's frustrating. <laughs> nope, that's not it. <sighs> oh, okay. What's next to talk about? Uh, the pictures, whenever Aaron's ready with them. All right, I'm going to load up some pictures. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, um, unless you guys have got some news about the photography world that I don't know about this week. Oh, did y'all see some Mark Smith's latest video? I think it's one where he went to like Costa Rica or something. 
Uh, no, that? I don't think I've seen that. Maybe it, it may not be new, but I think it is. But yeah, he's um, he went down to photograph some kind of weird little bird with a bunch of colorful feathers on it, and he found like 46 hummingbirds in the process. And just, just to get his dialogue well, while he's somewhere. showing the okay, photo, put it in the fridge, baby. Is hilarious. I've done lost my chat window. You know, I haven't watched a, a Mark Smith video in a while, but he's one of my favorites. I guess I should uh, have this guy, David Sailors. He's taking up all my uh, YouTube time. It's like he's uploading every day or something, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> all right, you ready some for, for, for your deer, 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 Yeah, bring it on. Let's see him now. When we do raise, we need to show the behind the scenes photo with the little puppy so that everybody can see how he got this photo. The photo is incredible. They're all kind we'll of see. out of order, so like, you know, we're just going to have to deal with yeah. it. Yeah. They should be grouped by name, at least. I, this is how. I don't did, know which. This is how Lightroom imported it. It, it does it by really. date. Oh, it does it by it date? It does it by the date. Yeah. You can't sort it by name or alphabetical. It does it by date. Yeah, it usually does <laughs> it by date. I don't know. Great. Uh, uh, yeah, so so which window is live? The one on the right or the one on the left? Uh, uh, the one that the says live. The one on the right should be <laughs> the, the one, one that they're saying. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the one that says live. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> there, I'll, I'll just put a splash screen up so you're not confused. <laughs> cool. Doesn't take much. Yeah. All right. Um, what's the name on the file? That's Mike Mitchum number three. Nice. Now, one of the guys, oh, Woody sent one of a flower bed. So when you show it, he wanted it retracted and the one of his neighbor inserted because it's a cool shot of his neighbor walking his dog. Wait till you see it. Well, I don't know. There's like lots of flowers, so I don't know which one's yeah. which. I'll point it out. It's okay. So he we just have to retract he, he wanted to trade it. It costs, no, it he costs double if you want me to delete it out of the catalog. Oh, okay. Two times uh, we'll zero is it. zero. <laughs> but yeah. Dude, I love that. I, the, I love can the, we see the Can we see the settings? No, I was there's just no, wondering, there's uh, no how... EXIF data in here. Gotcha. I was just oh, wondering how fast the shutter there. speed was to to freeze those wings. Yeah, there's there's no there's a lot of these that don't have EXIF data in there because it it would populate the EXIF data up there with the file name. Yeah. Hmm. It's pretty. It looks like we've got a succession of bass angler up next. Oh yeah. He sent yeah. quite a few. Now some of the he I think he said he didn't have time this week to actually get out and shoot photos, so he drawed on his catalog and sent us some of those. Uh oh. He sent I us mean, the greatest hits. <laughs> but you know, America's nice, most though. majestic bird. Look at that. Yeah, that's nice. And he's got that is up very there for nice. You. Nice lens. He knows what he needs to use. <laughs> What's next? <laughs> More oh, wow. Angle. Look at that. That's incredible. I like that. I love the symmetry and the motion that it's implying. Dude, that's cool. Let's see the next Very one. Very cool. Oh, Juvenile. wow. That's a, see there. We were talking about that the other day. That's uh, David. That's what a bald eagle looks like in about its second or third year. Oh, okay. Yeah, it looks a lot like a hawk. <laughs> yeah, but that's a bald eagle. The, then they start in their fourth year. They start to get a little white on the head and tail, and by the fifth, they're adults. Interesting. First year, they're solid brown. Hey, I gotta, I gotta jump on something. Go ahead and bring Bath Angler's next photo up. But Woody Mallory said, it looks like Mark Smith is slowly switching to Sony. In that video, it looks like he's a Sony fanboy. He talks nothing about oh, yeah. but the he's two Sony a... cameras he's shooting with. And yeah, he, he is. He's, I'd what? say he's yeah, quickly did, switching he to Sony. He slowly quit. He quit. He's pretty much on <laughs> He jumped on that now. bandwagon, didn't he? 
Yeah, he was running a teleconverter and the 400 millimeter um, Sony lens and an A7R4 and something else. Yeah, he had a whole bunch of high megapixel monsters. He's got a 600 F4, I'm pretty sure, from, from Sony. Oh, wow. He didn't take it. He was using a 400 with a teleconverter. I think he had a 1.4 teleconverter on it. But the images were exquisite. I mean, it was unbelievable, the resolution. Getting RD stuff today, oh. right here. So, yeah, that's... Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, All that's right. why, that's why I'm, I haven't moved. I'm downloading RD switch. Okay. Um, Doug Barnes, number two. Sand Hills. Nice. We're better known down in the south, the whooping crane. <laughs> oh, is that what it's called? Uh, they're, yeah, they're, no. they're, they're sand hills, or some, they're, or some people will call them iron heads, or, you know, down, you know, when I was growing up in Florida, they, they were called whooping cranes. Okay. They mate. They mate for That's life. They're are. one of the few. Uh, they're one of the bird species that actually uh, mate for life. Yeah, whooping crane is a, a whooping crane is a completely different species, and they are endangered. Where the sandhills not. But they're are they cousins? They're they're very similar. The whooping crane is is solid white, where the oh, okay. uh, where the sandhill has got some brown. I mean, some gray or a lot of gray. Interesting. All right. Yeah, if you go to like uh, if you go to a wildlife refuge that has lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of sandhill cranes, if you see a whooping crane, it probably has transmitters attached to its legs. Oh, really? And you'll see. I've seen a guy at the uh, at the Hiawassee Wildlife Refuge with a giant uh, and aerial moving it around trying to pick up the cra the whooping crane signal so he can yeah. see the endangered <laughs> bird. He's got a DF Yaggy tracking it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of cool. All right, what's next? Let's see. We're going to have to move through these pretty quick, guys, because we have a lengthy list of photos. 38 yeah. photos I, now? I can't, uh, at, presently, I can't make comments because I can't see them. Really? Yeah. Why can't you now see I can them? see. Because uh, you had a window in front of the tulips. Oh, it's because I was running <laughs> on stuff. Oh, all right. I thought you had yeah. another computer but, to monitor. Uh, well, yeah, but it's uh, it's it's way behind. Oh well, Heather's got it on hers. And I she's need, she's I up to date on the two now, so to keep Phil happy. <laughs> hey man, you're going you're going to need more than three monitors to keep me happy, pal. Maybe a muzzle. Ooh. I like the tulips. Uh, come on, I'm trying to so get that's Maxim here. Oh, Max sent one this week. Yeah, that. Um, He's he's out in Nebraska, I think it is. And these tulips came up and then it snowed and killed a bunch of them. And he got out and actually found some that weren't frostbit, basically. But he goes on a photo walk like every morning around his neighborhood and, and tries to find something interesting to photograph every day. It's like, I want to grow up to be like Maxim. That's that's what I was doing like, when I got the Z50, and I was up uh, up there on the northeast side of Indy, and I I would just take the Z50 out, and I'd go for a walk with the Z50 during lunch. What's next? I love that. Woody. Ah, uh, here's the, okay. Here's the dog. Woody, <laughs> Woody's <laughs> neighbor walking his dog. Yeah, <laughs> he wanted to trade the like it. the flower garden picture for this one, but yeah, that's pretty cool, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> that's real cool I like it'd be that. even cooler if like the if the john deere was broken down and the dog was uh was pulling, pulling it. it yeah yeah <laughs> that's good that's a good one let's see what's up what's next uh, uh okay this is, this this is, is the one he wanted rejected well rejected. he said trade it yeah, yeah, it wasn't that he didn't like it. He just wanted to trade. He didn't think he could send but two because I asked for two to try and keep it from overrunning. But you know, it's kind oh. of a loose rule. It's not an absolute rule. So here's a really that's, interesting that's one, cool. one from Doug, and that looks like an inside of a tower almost. Yeah, 
like no, looking cool. down toward the ground from the top of I think a cell it's tower. A, I think it's a bridge. I think it's a bridge. I don't know. It's awesome. It had the of geometry. Y yes. Yeah. yeah. The symmetry. David, you is can incredible. take uh, under the uh, under the Walnut Street Bridge. You can make a, a photo similar to this on the North Shore side. Well, it's for all them. It's, it'll be it'll be blue. It's really weird mm -hmm. because you can see like you can see the trees in the background are vertical, and it's really big and long. What is this like a radar tower or something? I don't. Um, he did have the name on it. I'll have to look. Um, can y'all see the chat? Let me see. Maybe he's done told us. Um, I can't bring up the chat. Like bridge. I don't have oh. enough windows. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's a bridge. Maybe like a railroad bridge would be my guess. Yeah, I bet that's what it is. It's a railroad trestle. Let's see. Oh, did I unplug it? No. Okay. <laughs> Doug Barnes, tulip trestle. There it is. It's a railroad trestle. Nice. Yeah, I like that. That's uh, cool. Oh, Very here's cool. your phone. Oh. <laughs> Look, it's a turn. Look. What is that bird called? That's a Forster's, I think, turn. Nice. I Made love the from... I love the black cap. Let's see. In in my in my best Mark Smith. And as what what kind of turn? Forster's. Okay, and as the Forster turn um, executed a beautiful ballet of landing on the rusty piece of equipment. It turned to give me the eye that I needed to get the photo. <laughs> he gives these beautiful descriptions of these simple photos that makes it to where you want to see what's next. <laughs> it's incredible. This I is actually even... a, it. It's on a uh, it's on a buoy. This is a this is a, a secondary channel marker. It's why it's so small. But I thought I think it, isn't George from Chicago? George Nagata, yeah. I thought he'd get a kick out of the way it says Chicago, USA on the on the little eye loop there on the top, even though it's in the Tennessee <laughs> River right here in Chattanooga. You know, yeah. Chicago had some humongous foundries up there. Oh, yeah. It was a, lot, a big steel industry A lot of cast iron cookware time. came out of Chicago. RD says he thinks this is the best photo you've ever branded. Wow, that was very nice. <laughs> There's a Teresa. Oh, I know that. I know that chick. This is this is handheld, all right, with the the XT3 with the 500 millimeter mirror lens adapted to it. So that's equivalent field of view oh, wow. is 750 millimeters. Wow! Look at the bokeh on the bridge at F8. Yeah, those things. Yes. Are, it, they it's they produce weird bokeh. Yeah, I like it. It's uh, it looks like onion rings. It's cool. Yeah, but you you see that too. Like if you ever look through a telescope. <laughs> You've got like a star oh, really? focus. You'll they'll they'll look kind of a like a donut. Yeah, I, I like it. I, I I think it's attractive, and uh, I, yeah. that is the Walnut Street Bridge, right? Yeah. Yeah, but you yeah, need a long lot to drive that lens. You know, that's that's fixed after yeah. aperture, isn't it? Yeah, you can't change the aperture on it. But it it's so long that it picks up so much camera shake. You know. Yeah, I don't think the mirror helps yeah. any either. Right. They, a, and the and the depth of field is razor thin. Who's this one? Uh, Woody Mallory. Ah, Woody and his rabbit in the garden. I it's love a it. bunny. Dude, now imagine how close he had to be. Even with a 500 mil, what, what was his name? Yeah. 200. Yeah, he's okay. So he's 200 millimeters to get close enough to fill the frame that you got to get pretty close yeah look he's close i wonder if That's, it's cropped any even if it is i mean look at how fine the hairs are he was pretty close when, yeah, he, when he fired yeah. the frame yeah yeah look at the it's, yeah look at the pixel size it's cropped a little on the width it looks it's, like it's it's you know that's that's like a 30 megapixel in 384 it's pretty 80 40 by three to, uh, yeah, he just trimmed the width a little bit. It being a D7, yeah. D7500, it's a three by two sensor. So, you know, all the Nikon sensors are three by two aspect ratios. He just cleaned the edges up. 
Man, that's a lot of wrong at all with cropping. I was just, I was just wondering. Nothing wrong at all with cropping. My image was cropped. Dude, I, I I do it on the regular. (laughs) Alex, I like this. Axelmar, this. Thank you, Axe, for sending such an awesome image. Wow. This is cool. You know, I've seen a million is pictures it, of, the, of the moon, and a lot of times you just put it right in the middle. And uh, I really like this. It almost looks like a, um, movie a door poster. lock where the, and, the, uh, and the moon is the keyhole. It's just cool, the, the, the um, composition of this. I like All right. It. I'm going to read you the email he sent along with his three images. This is one of the images, of course. It says, went out this morning and dusted off the old D500 and the 2 to 500 Zoom. He says, every time he goes out, it's like therapy. So glad you called out the challenge. Um, he said, here's his, in- his images. He sent one of a limpkin, the moon, and a common moorhen chick. All taken this morning, all handheld shots. So that's handheld. Look how clear it is. That's the beauty of that stabilized lens. What's this? What I can't read it. What's the shutter speed? Uh, it's pretty fast. One eight hundredth of it's a second a little... at uh, one eight hundred. Yeah, at five six. Yeah, that's the beauty of the moon. You can use a, you can use a high shutter speed on the moon. It's a pretty yeah. bright object. That's a beautiful image. I like and like you said, I like the positioning. That looks good. Yeah, it's. Just... That's it looks like a movie about. poster, don't it? Mm-hmm. Coming That's soon awesome. to a theater near you. There's right, an Osprey. This is Tim Cotter. Oh yeah, because you said it done them. It done them by date or time. It sorts them weird. It yeah, did it. It done it by Adobe. Yeah. <laughs> Adobe's like mix them up, shuffle them. Free with an XT3. Nice. Yeah, he posts a lot of really cool. Um, wildlife stuff on instagram and this uh apparently really this nice 100 photo. to 400 lens is legit look at that no kidding oh seahawk oh so that's the fujinon lens too nice yeah wow oh here's the next one up by axel yeah now is this the more hand or is this the other one the other one, he's got a limpkin and a moorhen. Well, I think well, the other one is the I chick because it looks. That's the limpkin because the other one's much a much younger creature. You'll see, it's the chick. So that's a limpkin. I've never seen one. That's an interesting bird. That's cool. I yeah, like that a lot. Good composition yeah. too. The moon beats it. <laughs> I'm still on the moon, buddy. That's got my vote right now. Let's see the next one. There's yeah, the chick. That's cute. Yeah, look at that. It gets cute points. <laughs> I think Chelsea Chelsea Northrop will give it a pick because it's cute. Yeah. God, the one, I one like show the, the, without the... that. <laughs> <laughs> I had to get it in there. That, it, it stirs up the, the comments. <laughs> um, and wow. Yeah. Is that a red winged blackbird? It looks like it. Let's see. That's I've never seen one look quite like that before. But I guess that's what it is. Who sent it? Tim? Yeah, Tim. Yeah. That's yeah, his he's second re- picture. This is the crop. Yeah, let's see here. Right here. Tim caught a couple XT3, 400. He doesn't say what the bird is. I guess it is a red winged blackbird. I've never seen one look quite like that. The, but the it's, original it's image awesome. is named image zero dot JPEG, so I don't have it. I'm I'm jumping over to the email to check. Sometimes they tell me a little bit of the, in the description about what's going on. That's why I tried to make notes about it. Nice photo. I like how it looks like it's looking straight at you, but it's technically not, isn't it? They're, it's looking to the side, isn't it? Mm-hmm. All it right. appears to be. Yeah. What's next? Uh, some stuff from TV. Oh, look at wow, look at the color. I wonder that's not a morning dove, I don't guess. I don't know what kind of dove that is. It's cool. Let's see. I like the is that blue around its eye? Here so. 
I like it. See. Yeah, they're and they um he sent three. Two of them are of the same bird. I think it's different edits. No, it's one that's tails fanned out, one it's not. Okay. There'll be another one coming. It's, it actually has its tail feathers fanned out. Wait till you see that. There it is. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Yeah, that's that's really cool. Yeah. I don't know what kind of bird that is. It's beautiful. I love how it's got all the color it's, it's, in the leaves, too. Definitely not a pigeon. It's, it's a cousin, though. It looks like a dove or a pigeon family. TV, if you're, if you're watching, let us know. It's a looks like a dove of some sort, or maybe a pigeon. You're right. What's next? I like that tail. Well, hello there. Yep, jerk. Oh wow. Ooh, it's a 500 f4 shot. Look at that. Who's is this? Jacob Jerg. Yeah, he's from he's from Europe. I think isn't he? Didn't yeah, we say he was say, from the Netherlands? Like a, that looks like one of those Scottish tits or something. It's a beautiful little creature, isn't it? Let's see. Um, sometimes Jacob actually tells me some stuff. Let me look and see. Ah, yeah. All right, he gave me a backstory. Are you ready? Yeah. Right. Let's see here. Wildlife photo. It, I think it's a blue tit, is my thing, is my guess. Longest telephoto lens is the 150 600 with a 1.4 tele on the on a Nikon 500 or a 500 millimeter f4 with a 1.7 tele, both 850 mil. Let me shot this and that and that. Um, what I prefer this. He doesn't have the bird's name on here. Pretty he sure just, it's a blue tit. It's really roughed up, isn't it? <laughs> I like it. Look how it's, clear it is. It, it had a bad morning. Yeah. Everything's fuzzy except its eyes, which are razor sharp. Beautiful photo, Jacob. Thank you for sharing that with us. Joey says it's a blue tit, too. And he says that um, wildlife and bird photos can't get enough of these long telephoto lenses. He said, getting subjects closer in frame is the sole reason for these zooms. <laughs> There's one from Heather. Now, Heather made this on the bird studio using a D7100 mm -hmm. and the uh, 55 to 300 or super, super low dollar uh, kit lens that I've had since 2011. And she went out on the back porch and she started working on bird photos, uh, not on this particular shoot, but a couple of days prior. And I, I went out there and I, well, you know, I don't have a blind anymore. So I threw a blanket over her so she'd have some sort of a hide. And then I went to work. Well, when I came inside the house to go to work, I locked the door. <laughs> so I locked her out of the house. And she was locked out for the whole time she did her shoot, which was a while. <clears throat> wow. Yeah. Look how crisp it is. That's incredible. What is that squeaking noise? I thought that was Dave's chair. <laughs> I, 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 Dave, no. Dave, I that's, thought... that's Heather's chair. Oh, I could have oh, okay. sworn Dave that's... said he was going to get a new chair. Yeah, that's Heather's chair. My bad. I, I should lubricate it. Man, look. that look how sharp it is. What kind of bird that's is this? A, that's a... It's a juvenile, a baby mockingbird wow. that we watch being fed all the time by their parents right on our back porch. It's ah, cute. It is cute. It's not cute as a tufted titmouse. Well, no, nothing's as cute as a tufted titmouse. Don't talk crazy. Yard bunny. <laughs> I think this is Yard TV's bunny. photo, isn't it? Yeah, it's TV's. Yeah. I like it. I like it a bunch. You know what? I, the yeah. only thing I don't like about a yard bunny is we've planted a bunch of tiny trees in our backyard and two of them were hawthorns, and the yard bunnies have eaten them down to the nub. Yeah. All the rest of the trees they're leaving alone, but they wore out those hawthorns. They, yeah. They'll, and, and they'll eat your young flowers, too. Yeah, this, this yeah. one's by George. Cute picture and well done. This is yeah. Just, Look no, how no, sharply composed. Yeah. Nicely composed. 
nice and sharp. I like the reflection in the eye. Nice. It's cute. Let's do the next one. This one's George. People see wow. It. It's Bane incredible. of everybody's gutters right now. Yeah. <laughs> Man, there's a lot of is them. Is that? This lens is not uh, sending data to the camera. I wonder if it's a reflector lens like Dave was using. And just judging by the circular bokeh in the background, the, the donut bokeh. And I bet it is. They they made, do you know they made that thing? They made that lens in 500 millimeter F8. 1,000 millimeter F11 and 2,000 millimeter F11. Wow. Can you imagine trying to shoot at 2,000 millimeters? Well, as tiny as your 500 is, that's, that's. It'd be small, but man, it would just be so, you'd have to have like a rock solid tripod. George says it's 500 millimeter mirror lens. Yeah, it's a beautiful photo. The same lens as you, I guess, or similar. Yeah. I cannot, uh, I can get it to focus sharp kind of close. It's weird. I can, we can get into that later if, I, if, if there's time left in the stream. I'll talk about my events yesterday. I'm making a video about it, but I learned a lot yesterday about that lens and it was interesting to learn. So That's you, an interesting photo. Cool. You're going to have to, okay, now this is about this. I, there's Go ahead. Ray's roommate's dog. Yeah. Now, Aaron, what was you saying? Oh, you better get him to talk about it because the BTS is going to be up next. Yeah. Okay. Well, let me read to you what, what, um, I don't know that he sent a big description this time, but he did send the BTS photo. Let me see if he, what he's got here. No, he just sent the BTS photo this time, but you can see when he does the photo, when he shows you. Now, look. What direction is the light coming from on the dog? A bunch. Think about that. Think about that. And where's the dog at in on Earth? Think about where is that dog at on you know when he when he took this photo. Now go to the BTS and show them. This is incredible. I actually had to look for the dog. Right. <laughs> <laughs> He's laid a black Crazy piece of used. cloth. Go ahead. He's got a black piece of cloth on the couch. He's got this huge light up above the dog behind it, but it's shooting off of a reflector in front of the dog across the room. Then he's got a speed light over here on camera left shooting in to, to fill in the, the dark spot on the left on the camera left side of the dog. It's it's a well thought out shot. And then he had to get the dog to stay. It looks like he's got yeah. two speed lights going. Got the you know, the yeah, Yogo, well, uh, YN968 in, and then he's got a YN6 RX. Oh, he's got another speed oh, line. Maybe, I didn't see that. No, one. no, no, that's a receiver. That's the RX. <laughs> so that's that. That's the remote yeah, okay. for it. Okay. He told me he used uh, two LED panels, a flash, and a reflector on the shot. Yeah. It's cool though. Cute little dog too. Yeah. Unless you're trying to sleep yeah. on the couch after going out oh. partying, then then that dog will drive you bananas there it is there the second panel is laying against the pillow on the couch there's one up behind it up in the upper area one on the couch and by and then on camera right and then he's got that speed light on camera left but it produced an incredible photo well done ray oh yeah and then he went out and took a picture of a Honda CRX, like my old 86 model I used to drive. I actually had one of those cars. The car drove like a dream until I blew it up. <laughs> so that lens that he's using is, that's that Sigma 120 to 300 2.8 constant um, zoom oh, that wow. he has. That's just that's the one he bought from B&H Condition 8 Plus for a really reasonable ply, price for such an amazing lens. Interesting. He does uh, pro soccer photography on the field with that lens and does well. I would about to say, and, and gets the shot, doesn't he? Oh, well, it's, it's oh, yeah. definitely a, a jump up over like a, the, yeah, it's a good range right there. The extra hundred millimeters. 
300 millimeters. Yeah, 300 mil at F2.8. That's a lot of light. Nice. That car has 225,000 yeah, miles. If I shoot with him... <laughs> If I shoot with him, I shoot a crop sensor camera with a 70 to 200 to have a similar range, but he, he's he got that range on a D850 with all that oh, resolution. Wow. So it's it's pretty cool. Oh, that's pretty. Yeah. Ray says Where he we... gets 225,000 miles on the clock on that car, and it still gets 45 miles of a gallon. That's the beauty of the Honda. If they're well cared for, they'll last virtually forever. I think this is Toronto. Um, he told me. Um, what's the name of the on the photo? Uh, it's just Jan Van Veen. Okay, Jan. It's actually John. John. Oh. Um, John Van Veen. His email says Jan, so I accidentally put that name on there. Um, I don't know. It's Roger's place is what he's taking a picture of. Yeah. Let me see. It he he named it on here. I'll find I'll find it in a second. But he said that's twenty kilometers away. Alberta, Alberta, Canada, Ed, Edm okay. Ed, Edmonton, Alberta. That's where that is. All right. Thanks. To Isn't Google. that beautiful? That's that skyline yeah. is incredible. That's cool. What did you Wish Google on it to get it? Is there a building in the scene Roger, that you can? Uh, yeah, Rogers Arena. Yeah, that's, oh, that's, okay. that's why place, I, I was zooming in. I was looking at the buildings. I was looking at the name of the buildings okay. trying to get some. <laughs> nice. Here's Joy stuff. Joy, is this with the new uh, the new lens? Oh wow! Look at that little fuzzy bird. <laughs> with the with the yeah, razor sharp eyes, you. there won't be any common birds in Joy's feed. <laughs> that bird lives in North America. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's incredible! I've never seen one of these. Very cool. Indigo bunting is what Heather said it's called. interesting all right what's the yellow one what's called the yellow, there? what's the yellow one yeah let's see purdy it's a purdy it bird like a, it looks like something with a crown i'm gonna guess because of the way it's head feathers do on its forehead that's interesting Let's see. Wow. That's I think it incredible. might that might be, I'm not sure, but I think that's a female scarlet tanager. The males are solid red or mostly red. Wow. But I could be wrong though. Joy will help us out here in a second. I can't wait to see her photo of this bird with a 20 millimeter. <laughs> female summer tanager is what she said it is. Very cool. That is. That's insane. Very nice, wow. as usual. Yes. What's next? Mike Mitchum. Oh, wow. I like it. All right, Mike down there. He's well, he's down south somewhere. I see that? I see the sable palm trees. Some oh live, yeah. Live oaks. Too. Oh yeah. I don't know, like Florida Gulf. He's got. He's got detail in the lighthouse the and trees. the moon. Yes, that's a pretty cool photo. I like that. That's hard to do. I like how it looks. It looks sunsetish without that yellow color that everybody puts on them, you know. And he's got the exposure to where the moon's not a white orb in the sky. I like it. That's pretty awesome. Oh wow! Saint Simon's. Wow! Look at that. That must be a shrimping boat. Yeah. There's my boat. That boat would go twice as fast if we get the birds off of the fishing rods. Jumbo, <laughs> shrimp fried rice, shrimp, shrimp, shrimp scampi, <laughs> shrimp scampi, shrimp sushi. 
I tell you what, if you're a bird photographer, just ride on the bow of that boat and make your shots. <laughs> yeah, he <laughs> yeah. could use a 20 millimeter. <laughs> I, I, I'll tell you, one of the craziest things I've ever had to deal with with like seagulls, like, used to go to Ponce Inlet, which is it's the inlet uh, comes out of the Atlantic into the river at New. And uh, the blues run through there, and we, we'd go down there, we'd go catch them when the blues would come in. And you'd had to fight seagulls to get your bait in the water. And, and it, <laughs> they'd, they'd snatch it out of the air, would wouldn't catch, they? You would, you would be reeling in seagulls. I mean, it was crazy, because like, if, <laughs> if, if the bait hit the water, a fish would get it. If it didn't hit the water, you were fighting a seagull over it. Because <laughs> it was flying away. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was. You wanted to have a weird day of fishing, just go out there to Ponce Inlet when the blues are running. And whoa, <laughs> you're fighting them from above and below. It was crazy. <laughs> Sounds like oh, look at that. Yep, another one for Mike. Check out the check out the hummingbird. Get is that a red breasted hummingbird? Is that what, or is that just a reflection off the feeder? I can't tell. They call them, uh, the ones that come around here are ruby-throated hummingbirds. But usually the, the red goes a little further around. But that may be hey, a ruby-throated. I don't know. That's got the, I, can normally, see, I can see that iridescent green on the tail. Yeah. Maybe it's a female? And that yeah. ruby throat don't Could always be. show up, does it? They have to. They do something to make that turn red, don't they? Well, it. I mean, it's always there, but they can change the angle of it and catches the light and sometimes it doesn't but the ones that have the red throat it's it's pretty much always red it may be brighter or darker oh okay oh uh mike says it's a reflection thank you mike just just a squirrel trying to get a nut <laughs> <laughs> look at so it they say uh-oh i kicked my camera by accident there we go I like it. Yeah, that's you know, cute. Normally, normally cool. you don't catch them from this angle. It looks like he's been working out. Look at his shoulder muscles. <laughs> he's look, he's pretty pretty buff squirrel. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty cool, really. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm not a huge fan of squirrels, but I love to take their picture. I don't know why that is. They can, if you catch them just right, you can make a really uh, um, good photograph that brings out emotion in the viewer. Nah. And this one does that. Already said it's a female. <laughs> She's been working out. Yeah. Dude, that's pretty sweet. I like it. <laughs> What's next? Blue Angels from Cuban oh. Rum. Nice. F 18 Hornets. Very cool. You should sit in one of those things. It's incredible. How I'm afraid I might accidentally release the emergency brake. <laughs> oh, no, don't worry about that. It's it's incredibly uncomfortable. I don't see why guys want to fly on and do those long range missions. They'll fly off the carrier out in like the Indian Ocean and then fly all the way to Afghanistan for a bomb run with those things. Do in flight refueling and then fly all the way back to the carrier back in the ocean and. They'll be gone like 20 hours. My buddy Jason just retired out of there and he worked avionics on them. And he said, they'd be gone, you know, 18, 20 hours easily. And it, it's just, when you sit down in them, it is not a, it has zero creature comforts, zero. It's hard angles. You're in a cramped position the whole time. You have to want to do that job. It's just, it's incredibly uncomfortable. I don't, I do not understand why men would want to do that. I just, after sitting in the cockpit of one, it was not a pleasant experience. And those things are enormous. You know, you see them flying over and you think, oh, they're little bitty planes because they're fighter jets. You know, only two people sit in them. They're like 40 feet long. They're huge. <laughs> you going, Joy? Okay. I'm glad you showed Bye, up. Joy. Appreciate the photos. It was, uh, they were unbelievable as usual. Phone's running out of juice. All right, good night. That's cool. Nice shot. Yeah. Nice shot. I like that. Yeah. 
You know, seeing fighter jets makes me want to go to that place in England where they do that valley run and the photographers get on top of the mountain and, fi- and photograph them as they come out of that valley. That'd be cool. I know what I'm talking about. There's no, a place over there. Cool, where, for sure. Yeah. If you if you Google search it, you'll see there's like guys standing on the edge of a bluff and there's the belly of a fighter jet right in front of them. And that's not Photoshop. Those fighter jets just shoot up out of that valley all at once at the end of the run, and these guys are standing there with big lenses taking their picture as they come out. It's pretty cool. Whoa, we're back. Is that all of them? That was it. We got the 38 pictures fairly quick. Wow. Wow. Well, I want to admit, guys, those photos were incredible. Wait a minute. You could literally. I always do this. I always, Where's yours? The, I always forget the last one because I, I didn't import it. Uh, it was RD's photo. Oh, I yeah. Said, he yeah, emailed give it, me didn't second. he? Let me import it, RD's photo. Or did I import it? <laughs> oh, there it is. Well, the I'll, Mockley, I'll that's what it's RD. called, yeah. Bass Angler named it. It's called the Mock Loop. Now, John says, John Van Vee says, you can you can even wave to the pilots. They're so low. There's oh, RD's wow, excellent dude. photo of a Baltimore Oriole. Very wow. cool. Very, that's very a, cool. Never even seen one, bird. much less photograph one. Huh. You got so, one Phil don't have. Oh, he's and it looks there's like plenty he, I don't have. <laughs> that's uh that's nice. Is that in a bird feeder? I mean a bird bath? Kinda yeah, it looks like, like a bird those, bath. Uh, and it looks like one of the clamshells. Yeah, I bet he got that in his front yard. He didn't even have to go way off in the forest and chase it around. Or anything. <laughs> oh man, you're rubbing it in now. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, you know the ones that never right. fly into the VW wetlands. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, I got that. That was it. We're done with those. Now. Thirty-eight, thirty-nine Very cool. photos. Nice. Well, good now, good like job, I said, Ron. Yeah, that was nice. I really enjoy those. The photos you guys are bringing are incredible. I want to I wanna put a cap, though. Two photos. Because we're actually starting to accumulate them. And I, and I don't want to just run through them. I like having time to banner. And we actually had time. We got on to them a little early. We didn't drag it out getting started tonight. So we actually didn't run out of time. But if, um, if you can get your opportunity, get your widest lens and go make a fun photo with it. Something interesting. From the Something bedroom fun. window, Ron said. If that's Sorry. where you got to do it, you know, if you can't, if you're still under under house arrest rules in your locale and you can't go outside yet, do what you can with what you got. Um, we don't, we don't so say that. So is that, that two photos, including a behind the scenes? Yes. Or two the photos BTS plus do, a behind the scenes? Oh, uh, um, not everybody shoots a BTS photo. We can add the BTS. Right, right. All that, you know. Not everybody's willing to go to that trouble. Um, or yeah, I just make a whole video about it, and it comes out in a month. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of work to to do, especially to make a YouTube video. It's a lot of work to do BTS work. It really is to get all that extra footage and then work it in. It's it it actually slows the process down about oh. four times yeah. slower. Yeah, well, you're carrying a whole a, a completely second camera rig with you when you're mm-hmm. making a video while you're doing stills. It's like, you know, true. you're carrying twice as much crap. Oh, he I need says, two he tripods. says we need to make next week more of a challenge. What? <laughs> what, more Wide of a challenge angle, to you view, know, view or, or we need a bigger challenge, <laughs> of, you know, with the lenses? <laughs> Yeah, I don't let's know. see. What I, you got? I think it's I think it's more difficult to make a compelling photo with an ultra wide lens than it is with a super telephoto. It uh, is. You know, if you get if you get a bird in in focus and the light's okay on it, it's probably going to look great. Um, you know, if if you can get it in focus, but but making something super 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 wide look compelling uh sometimes can be a little more difficult you just have to get close 
All the Ooh, greats. long exposure with a wide angle. Ooh. More than two seconds. Wow. That'll make things easier to be um, compelling, in my opinion. Yeah, Woody. Woody, think, but... it's because it's because Aaron's hosting, so he has a really high speed connection, and we're feeding our feeds to him, and he's combining them and then sending it out. That's yeah, why his yeah, my, is smoother. Yeah, my video than ours. camera is actually, you know, going directly into the stream. They're coming in through another program, and then fix them up there on the top. It's just the nature of the internet we deal with. I really like Phil's background image, though. He's got a really interesting background decoration. I didn't bring that. I did bring the Z6. I have my Z6 tonight. Look at that. That, that is a custom. And it has a lens on it. A custom uh, dehumidifier for a lens. <laughs> yeah, it would probably work because these are, I've got LED lights, but these are older uh, incandescent Christmas lights. But oh, I yeah. Know, so I that lens is. I mean, it's, it's, it, it's not bad. I mean, these it's are still warm, the tiny it? ones. I mean, you're, uh, David, you're almost my age. You remember when we were kids and Christmas lights were big and hot? Yeah, and they wouldn't burn <laughs> until you went through them one at a time, changing out a good one for a, <laughs> for them until it came on. Yeah, I mean, did, did y'all have you them? This, did y'all hundreds of extra hot light bulbs on a on a drying tree in your house? What could go wrong? Right. Did y'all ever have them that had what looked like a little, um, it reminds me of a sweet gum ball that looked like a little, I guess they were trying to make it look like a little mini ice crystal sphere with points all over it. And then the light went down inside of it and it made it kind of sparkle with those facets. But those things were very sharp and it was not pleasant to work with that string of lights because them things would chew your hands up. I don't know if you ever had them. <laughs> I, I don't finally, recall those, but that that sounds uh, like a nightmare. Yeah, we threw all that away at some point. But I finally got me a regular F to Z adapter that doesn't have the hot shoe mount in it. You know, the ones from Nikon, it has a it has a tripod lug in it. So I got me around one like Aaron's got. I think you got one of these too. But I've got a bunch of I these do. old. Do you? I got a bunch of these. Yeah. AI pre AI lenses. And I'm going to want to put them on here. And I just don't want to deal with all that extra weight and mass. So I really, Dave, you know what? Here is the million dollar idea. You remember what I showed you, what Canon's doing with their new adapters. That's got the drop in filter in there. That's on so the backside. Cool. Nikon. Yeah. FTZ 2.0 needs that and screw drive autofocus. Oh yeah. But yeah, it needs, it needs a screw drive. It definitely if, needs if that. You could, if you could make those with a drop in filter, I would, that would be awesome. Cause you know, yeah, I think the, the new Canon, the new Canon one has like, it has a drop in CPL filter. Huh. But you should be yeah, able well, to. There's, they, the, the, they the make, TPL they part two. would be kind of difficult. You would have to you'd have to put that little gear tooth thing like yours has got on the outside. Yeah, it's got got a little thumb yeah. wheel on the side of it. But I mean, yeah. you know, you think of it, you know, you you, you got an eighty two millimeter lens or you got a filter thread on an eighty two millimeter lens, and you're back there in the back. I don't know. I just wish I would see more of that more of that type of engine out in the mirrorless stuff. Yeah, you could put a forty nine yeah, was... millimeter filter in it. Um, it's 49.149 millimeters on the ID of this particular F to Z adapter. So yeah, you could get it in there. This There's is room. What this is what happens when you engineering meets photography. Yeah. <laughs> Cause if it goes all the way against this part, then you can get it far enough. You can get it close enough to the back of the lens. We could easily put NDs in there, getting the CPL in. It's going to be, yeah, you'd have to add that uh, that thumb yeah. wheel to be able to adjust it. And then you'd have to blacken it. You'd have to keep the light leak out somehow. Now now you got me looking at it. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, hey, you know right. what? What happens if you dropped a, you know, 49 millimeter variable ND in there? Yeah. Oh yeah. Now I got now I got you thinking, didn't I? That's the video rig. Well, see if you if you just run the if you put the CPL in here, then you could put the, the variable ND on the front of the lens. 
and it would allow you to have both. Yeah. This is the. Let's see if I can get this in focus. I may not be able to. Oh, let, me, let me bring you up, Phil. I, oh, dang it. Hold on. I forgot to do that. Hold on, hold on a second, Phil. Either not, okay. me, I'll just bring you in full screen. Give me one second. Yeah, I'm just working on getting myself in focus or what I'm trying to show you in focus. Just sitting here being but this cool. is the uh, let me know when we're ready. <laughs> oh, I got you. Hold He's on. working on it. Here you go. Okay. All right. This is the go. this is the drop in filter for the 500 F4. Now, you could it it comes with a clear one. It's part of the optical equation, apparently. And yeah. you just uh, take this little knob and twist it and it drops in. But it's got a gear on the top. And it turns the CPL that sits down inside that monster lens. Interesting. We need Pretty to cool. find a sacrificial part for it to send to Dave. Yeah. Say yeah, I'll just send this. Dave Here, drop this inside an FTC. Can, yeah, can you just buy? Fifth. Can you buy the filter tray as a replacement part? Uh, well, I bought this used for like nearly two hundred dollars. It's very expensive. Oh, uh, oh, it's a circular it polarizer built into the tray, it's, isn't it? Yes, that's that's oh, what I'm driving at. That's where the gear is on the outside. Right. You're not actually touching the filter. You're touching the gear, and the gear is touching the filter, which has a gear on it. Yeah. But it definitely works. I can, I can. Uh, but that's you know that's the design that you would need in, and, and that may be what Canon's doing. I'm surely if they've got a filter holder in their uh, adapter, then surely they've got a a circular polarizer possibility with it. Any any Canon mirrorless shooters on here? Uh, probably. Uh, Cuban Rum says Dave can do it. <laughs> oh, already yeah, had can. to go. Just put a uh, just put a bike tube on it. Yeah. <laughs> now, I could possibly worm gear it a little easier. You didn't got me thinking about this seriously. It's not this ain't a very complicated system. Nope, there's enough there's enough uh, area in between in betwixt. Yeah, these they and these adapters are very thick aluminum, so they give you plenty of meat to work with. And if we needed yeah. to, we could even mill a deck and then bolt on an extra block to add more mass to get it all in there. But I think we got room. Let's see, where would you make the adjustment? You on the bottom? That when that filter tray's in the lens, Phil, is it got the adjusting wheel on the top or the bottom? It it's on the top. And it okay. has a flange that comes out pretty far around the the hole in the lens and the upper part of the hole in the lens has a rubber gasket all the way around it. And it just lays down on that. And then it, it has a spring loaded uh, push down twist. And then the spring holds it in place good and tight. So it's, yeah. it's weather sealed. So Dave, why did you not use the FTZ for these other lens where you don't need the electronics of the FTZs? You just don't like that base? Um, you mean like this setup right here? This? Yeah, where you've got a where you've got oh. a, a F mount uh, to Z mount adapter that's not the FTZ. What was your purpose of of purchasing that instead of using the FTZ? I can answer because that. when that, you go that foot gets in the way. Go ahead. When you put a Arca Swiss plate on the bottom of the camera, you can't mount the lens. It won't it won't go gotcha. on. You have to take the Arca Swiss off to get it out of the way, and then. Just so, because this thing sticks down below the plane of the camera, and I wanted to be able to like the, mount the L bracket yeah. that I use on my Z6, uh, which has an Arca Swiss plate on the bottom and the side. Mm -hmm. uh, it is it it does not interfere with uh, FTZ removal, which is really really nice. Um, I think it's Sunway Photo. It was only like forty nine dollars, but the reason I bought a, a a third party F mount to Z mount adapter is I have uh, a Rokinon 14 2.8, which who knows, I may do this week's challenge with it instead of my expensive Nikon. But, uh, <laughs> and, and it has, the, it's got the, the focus electronics in it, but for whatever reason, it doesn't like to talk to the FTZ. It goes crazy. The exposure goes all over the place. So I said, you know what? It's got an aperture ring on it. I'll just get a, a dumb 
F to Z adapter, and and now I can adjust the aperture, and it's just like it's a a vintage lens, but it works, and and the nice. other way didn't. That's interesting. That um, it just doesn't know. Checking this. I wonder if anybody uh, watching, or uh, I know you haven't, Dave, uh, Aaron. Maybe you have bought a vintage Fujinon lens. Uh, I've uh, I finally got a uh, a M. What is it? M forty two. The screw mount uh, adapter for my Z six, and I bought a Fuji. 55 1.8 that i'm uh excited to uh have it come in Did you kill something dave yeah it's a daggum little fly buzzing around my head <laughs> here it is I'll find this guy i i sent him to dave i sent i shared this with dave before but like like does like asmr for vintage lens Is it xenography? Yeah, it's xenography. I'm trying to. I'm actually trying to find Dude. a link to throw post it in the channel. Dude, I love listening to his monologue. His videos are awesome. I don't know where he's from. I think he's Canadian, but his he does an incredible voiceover monologue when he talks about his lenses. It's awesome. Yeah, here I'll throw his link out in the chat for you. So if you're interested in vintage lens, this is a really good guy to follow because when he talks about a lens, he talks about it with like some deep passion i've never heard anybody talk about it. yeah i like that it, i like that i'll tell I you i've seen a couple of his videos yeah 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 good stuff the bokeh is not the smooth bokeh that you would expect from like a zeiss otis lens but more <laughs> unrefined and chaotic where the bokeh balls are pushing and shoving one another out of the way for vying for position in your frame you know it's like it's like how's he come up with this <laughs> I like it. Yeah, I like his channel. <laughs> now, the Fuj Fujinons are supposed to be good. I haven't tried one yet. Um, I tried to get tried to get one, but the guy wouldn't ship it. Really? It, it was on eBay. I bought it, and, you know, he, did, he didn't ship it. And I'm like, hey, you know, you haven't shipped it. We ship it. And he never replied. So I got eBay in, and he's like, well, I can refund your money or ship it. And I'm like, ship it. And he still didn't ship it. So <laughs> eBay just re refunded my money on it. I'm just like, I don't know why the guy was having such a hard time to, you know, getting it out the mail. Interesting. That's weird. Yeah, that, I, the the location that that lens is being shipped from is Phoenix, so I figure it probably won't have any fungus with their yeah. uh, not a lot of not a lot of humidity out there to make fungus grow. Right. Yeah. That, get, um, that's the beauty of them. I'll get that fly in a minute. I, I've got some stuff. If you, if you pick up, if you pick up a, uh, a a lens that's got some fungus in it, and I've got that uh, ammonium chlorate, which I use it in fish tanks to to clean out uh, fungus out of a fish tank. Yeah. So you just um, you just you bring it down to about a three percent uh, solution, uh, distilled water, and it'll clean. It, it, as long as long as the uh, the fungus hasn't etched the glass; it'll clean it right out. I'm, I'm nice. like, I'm starting to look at. I've been following a lot of videos and seeing, like, you know, if you got fungus in a lens, there's a good chance that lens is still usable if you can clean it up. Right. Cool. Yeah, that worked pretty good. Dude, that lens actually works really well. I don't have a memory card in my camera. I have the dreaded. Demo only. Show you. Yeah, it doesn't have the memory card in my, my in focus. I have to go here to see. Yeah. I made the fatal error of pulling the memory card. Oh, wait. I'm one of those guys that has two of everything. There's one down in here. <laughs> you don't see you don't see some dollars? That is not cheap. I have one of those. <laughs> Man, that thing cost a fortune. There we go. Yeah, I'll get the one out of the carburetor at the house and put it back in. That way I won't forget it. But I just lost the picture I took of my camera. <laughs> you need to no, get Sierra or own memory card. Yeah, there's some truth in that. The This lens is new to me. I just got this lens last weekend. 
I got three Nikon lenses and a teleconverter and a Nikon camera body all at once off of Facebook Marketplace. The guy was wanting to sell his old camera gear. And I went, he lives right down the road. Normally, I have to drive oh, like wow. all the way to the other side of the world to find these cameras. And this guy is literally like two miles away. And so I went down there and looked no at shipping. it for gear. Yeah. Nice equipment in good shape. Looked like he had hardly ever used a couple of lenses. He had a 50 millimeter F1.4 on the camera and it's seen some use, but the other two lenses, they look pretty much brand new. So yeah, but yeah, reviews to come. I do now currently own two 50 millimeter F1.4 pre AI lenses that are 204 serial numbers apart. Let's see here. Let me jump back over. I've got way too so much. I can see the 50 mil spectrum. Oh, Ray's got that slant. That memory. Dude, that's, Ray bought that's the what Heather said when I told her I was purple. buying a 55. Wow. She said, all your lenses are 50s. <laughs> well, if you, put it, yeah. if you put like those 50s, uh, those, those 50s, like those older 50s, you put them on like the Z50, they really shine on a Z50, minus you don't have any mm -hmm. Ibis, but. Yeah, that's, that's kind of why, like why I was XT3. looking for a 55 or a 58. I thought it'd be, you know, kind of like an 85 mm -hmm. on the Z50. I, I and love it is. My... I love running that Sears on the um, that 55 Sears I got on the uh, Z50. It's a, it's a perfect mm -hmm. combo. Looking at Max's notes about the. Um, EBC Fujinons. <laughs> That's Here's an interesting sound. <laughs> Ray bought the 120 oh, gigabyte version of the XQD card. That wasn't cheap. Yeah. <laughs> well, he needs it. He needs it shooting soccer games with a 45 megapixel camera. He definitely needs it. Ooh, yeah. Trying to see what uh, was George. George was asking anybody use coking filters back in the day. What's a coking filter? I think coking was the original uh, uh, manufacturer that started uh, doing square filters. Oh, okay. I could be wrong. Interesting. Oh, because he's got D500. That's why he's got that 120 gigabyte version. Ax says the Auto Sears 55 F14 is a true jewel. He owns two of them. Yeah, I, wow. I got I got mine and I, I love it. I got one Sears uh -oh. lens and it's it's okay, but it's not a great lens. It's I think it's a zoom lens. Bought well, it off who eBay. manufactures the Sears lenses? It, all sorts of people uh, did. Yeah, oh yeah, just the, the cheapest bidder. There was a whole plethora yeah. of those small like cabinet shops in Japan that made lenses for subcontract. And I, they're probably buying their glass from one of the, you know, from Heiko or Nikon or whoever that could get the lenses ground for them. But they would assemble them in house in little, in little small factories. There were several of them little companies that done that, you know, Tokino at That's the time was one of them. Yeah. Uh, Sears just uh, cannibalizes or, or assumes other people's stuff. Like uh, Kenmore was all Whirlpool, and uh, dude, um, I slow had, down now. I had a, a Kenmore yeah. was Kenmore was was Roper Corporation. Then it was General Electric because I built them stupid stoves for almost twenty years. <laughs> is that right? Well, you know, a lot of the Kenmore stuff is Whirlpool too. It is now. They bought the name and. Uh, well, now I don't know who owns it. They bought the name. There was a weird, yeah. when when Roper Corporation was a huge conglomerate back in the 80s. And when it sold, they had a, like a lawn, lawn equipment division. They made lawnmowers and crap. And then they had, a, they had a whole bunch of appliances, home appliance division. And GE got the home appliance division. But Whirlpool got the red and blue barred Kenmore logo. We got, GE got the manufacturing but Whirlpool bought that logo. That's what you're talking about. The Kenmore logo that has the red bar and blue bar on it, or the Roper logo, excuse me, the Roper logo. They got that logo. But the Kenmore brand was basically the Sears house brand, and we made them for decades. 
on the same assembly line as the GE ranges, yeah. the same exact parts. So, you know, you could buy the Kenmore and you basically got the GE profile. Okay. Same range. That's that's kind of like what MTV When I was a kid, did. I had an Atari 2600, but it didn't say Atari 2600. It said Sears Video Arcade or something, but it would run mm-hmm. all the Atari games. It was it was an Atari 2600, but it said mm-hmm. Sears on it. So they they've uh, yeah. they've rebranded a lot of stuff. I think JC Penny has some lenses too, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Back in the day. Yeah, I got some of them. I've got at least one or two JC Penny lenses. They did they did that same thing. Yeah. Just strike a contract with somebody to put their logo on on your gear. You know, you pay us enough money, we'll write your name on it. <laughs> hmm. Says yep. Axe look Googled it and said the auto series was made by Mamiya. Wow. And some some of the fifty fives and some uh, the, the, though though depending on that's a weird thing about those Sears that uh, the fifty five Sears some of them are actually got uh, radioactive and some of them aren't. Okay. So that's depending on where they were made, I guess. Well, yeah, it depends on when, uh, I think. Uh, but yeah, they there there's two there's actually two variants of the Sears fifty five. One's radioactive and one's not. I need to really try that UV light trick on a couple of mine because I've got a couple of them they're starting to yellow. And supposedly you can like put a UV light on them for a few days and it'll burn that yellow out of them somehow. Stick them in a windowsill. Put them in the sun. Yeah, just put them in a windowsill and, you know, let them sit there for a week. It does the same thing. All right. I'll try that. I got one that gets a lot of sunlight. I've seen guys, they'll, they'll, they'll lay them down to where the light's shining straight through them and uh, in like two or three days in front of the UV light bulb and they're clear again. They're almost, almost all the yellow will go away. So it's like it's a chemical reaction and the UV light breaks down the chemical chain or something. Yeah, I, I I don't know. It kind of just it, it mm-hmm. it'll be take that yellow lens and turn it clear again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, several of my Pentax Asahi Super Takamers are radioactive. You can see that they they're slightly yellow tinged, and it's not from the coating. It's just that's the lens. But the radiation it puts off is like really low grade. It's not very. It's not hazardous. I mean, I've. You can get you get more radiation from an, an X-ray tube from a microwave oven standing in front of it while it cooks something. You know, it it surprises you how much radiation is around you every day, and no one bats an eye. <laughs> so, some supposedly somebody said that if you leave those old radioactive lenses on your mirrorless camera, that it'll damage the sensor. But I've left that fifty-five millimeter f one eight that that Pentax lens on my xt3 for extended periods of time before i was told that it would damage the sensor and i haven't seen any degradation in the photos but you know they say with the with the dslrs the mirror and the and the mirror uh, mechanism that holds it that plate that holds the mirror is dense enough that the radiation particles that those lenses emit won't hurt won't get to the sensor on a dslr because of the mirror plate and the mirror uh, it'll stop it but i don't think so but but okay. yeah well it's the uh, you know particles won't pass through certain objects you know they absorb if they're low grade particles you know they don't it's like the kind from a nuclear blast will stop through six feet of cement you know rabbit hole not to make it yeah. make a camera out of concrete <laughs> <laughs> a very very large pinhole camera but we'll, we'll build we'll build the new radio at, or we'll build the new boat anchor the uh-huh. boat anchor, literally <laughs> it's funny i say all why, sorts of different why did things. you retract that message <laughs> Oh, now I wish I had seen it before it was retracted. Yeah, I didn't pay attention. I was too busy talking. Uh, it was talking. on the top of uh, a topic of our radioactivity discussion on those old ones. Oh. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I don't remember. But yeah, so, I wanted to, uh, I wanted two to run pictures. This, this, I'm sorry. Go ahead. So oh, two pictures in, 
including uh, behind the scenes. Well, you can so add the BTS have, photo if you want to do one. Yeah, you can have one picture in a BTS or two pictures, but not two pictures and two BTS, I guess. Yeah, I mean, we can filter out the BTS photos if there's too many submissions. If you want to send BTS photos, go ahead. And uh, if, you know, if we have a um, hundred photos show up, we'll just, we'll just cut out the BTS photos and just show the photos. That makes yeah. sense. We talked about Ray's, uh, we talked about Ray's behind the scenes more than we talked mm -hmm. about the picture. When we got done, I wanted, let's go back and see the picture again. <laughs> I've yeah. forgotten how good it was. It was, it was a good shot. I, li I liked it. I, yeah. He sent, he, he sent me three uh, pictures that he made from, from that setup. I said, Oh, the first one, the first one. And uh, that's the <laughs> one he sent. Well, that's an awesome photo, but yeah. 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 Send your BTS photos. If you want to do go to the trouble of collecting them. And if we, you know, if we only get 20 people that send us photos, then we'll, we'll run them through along with the photos. How about that? You know, as long as we got time, that's what the key is. Make sure we got time. Yeah. Oh, all right. So <laughs> Axis saying he took a ticket Geiger counter tent. Was it reading 1.4 millirads per hour? Definitely putting it out gamma radiation. Uh -huh. Yeah, which does penetrate. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, Interesting. Ken, Ken Wheeler did a whole like four or five videos on that on the on those lenses with the Geiger, a couple of different Geiger counters, I think. Mm-hmm. That was interesting. I'd like to see how much radiation one of these puts out. Well, I don't know. I mean, yeah. then I mean that's RF radiation, so that's a little bit, you know, mm -hmm. lower in the spectrum than there. We're talking about like alpha and beta and gamma particles. Mm hmm. I mean, it, it RF still, is bad news. It does crap. I mean, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I've got like a scar on my back from when I was working on a tower, and uh, the 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 it was television tower and and they didn't turn the that was back but you know i was working on tires when they didn't turn the transmitters off uh, unless you were physically mm. climbing on the antenna which would happen but i yeah. backed up i backed up into i wasn't wearing a shirt backed up into it man it burnt my back good mm -hmm. huh. it's looking for that path <laughs> well i'm pretty sure that was like a 10 or 20 kilowatt uh radiation burn on a television antenna array up there it did not yeah well it's seven it's been a good time yes i appreciate I, you guys I've coming along it. for the ride um 20 millimeter well wide angle lens wide angle lens like you said <laughs> not just 20 mil <laughs> that's what i have but glad everybody showed up and stuck around as long as you did appreciate it until next time get your camera out and go make a picture with it all right we'll see y'all later Got go bye -bye. tap Got go tap